Hey, Mystic Michaela spiritual family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela. Oh, we, I am so excited. This episode, our little holiday gift to you guys, a huge scavenger hunt. Uh, Stay tuned. It's going to happen in this episode with specific instructions, what to do after the scavenger hunt to enter to win Oh my gosh, we have thousands of dollars worth of prizes and a lot of you can win. So I hope you all participate and get ready for that. And I'm also going to be talking about the Aura Gift Giving Guide. What gifts suit which auras? But first, hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. So the uh, holiday season is heating up. It is. And so is the Christmas gift exchange. Oh, yes, you and I. And that's This is the big one. I am it. the reigning champion, as I everyone knows. I woke up this morning and I changed my whole plan. It was like God spoke to me and now, I won. I know I did. I, I feel like there there this this could be a little something going on, a little bit fraudulent here. Is, there, is this like trickery on your, your part? No, no. I, I, I struggled with the vibe of this one because as you know, each year you and I don't give each other actual gifts. We get a theme and then there's a $20 spending limit. And this year the theme was a gift a distant relative would send you. And I didn't get the vibe, but today I understood the vibe. And the vibe is you don't really like it that much. Right. And that was because I actually told that to you. Well, you said you're not going to like your gift at all. And then you started laughing hysterically. I was laughing hysterically. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, and I thought like something clicked and I, and I woke up this morning and I'm like, I know what to get him. Well, so, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I thought I had it in the bag. I was like, oh my, I, and I still do. <laughs> I but know. now I'm getting a little nervous. I don't know. I'm so confident. You're freaking so, me out a little. On Christmas morning, check out my story. You guys can decide yes. who won. Yeah. Last year, you guys voted and I won. Yeah. So I'm the reigning champion. Um, so we'll see who wins this year. I still think I'm going to win. Uh, I think I have this one. We'll see. But, all right. We'll see. Uh, as you know, we play Jumanji on this podcast. It's an international hit. It is. Uh, it's played all around the world. Yeah. Uh, I thought for this one episode, and I know we don't mention it all the episodes, and I'm not even going to go into how it's played because all you guys know how it's played already. If you don't go back to the previous episodes, I have no idea where we first started the game. But we're going to play it a little differently today because instead of Jumanji, that doesn't count, it is going to be Santa. So Santa. if you hear Santa, yeah. then you know what to do. But this isn't um, part of the scavenger hunt. Don't confuse people. This is not people. part of the scavenger hunt. <laughs> Don't confuse, um, and there's no prize for this. Right. <laughs> no, well, there is a prize for the people that are playing. <laughs> right, yeah. right, and, right. Again, to You're increase all... our male leader, uh, <laughs> viewership. Yes. Um, the other thing is any version of Santa works on this. So okay. you can, you know, Santa Claus, Chris Kringle. Papa Noel. Papa Noel, <laughs> Father Christmas, St. Nick, St. Okay. Nicholas. Right. Babo Natali? <laughs> is that Italian? <laughs> so, what Babo, is... <laughs> B-A-B-B-O-N-A-T-A-L-E. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that's, is that Italian? Yes, yeah, Italian. Okay. Uh, De Morose. Oh, D-E, D-E-D. What language is it? That's Russian. Oh, I don't D-E-D-M-R-M-O-R-O-Z. know. D E D M R M O R O Z. Okay. It sounds Russian. Like, mm. like it sounds like depressing. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one is for my parents. If they want to play, they definitely know this. Noel Baba. Oh. That's Turkish. Oh, yes. For because Baba. they're obsessed with the Turkish <laughs> love Netflix. The Tur- right. So operas. So any form of Santa we're starting right now works. Chris okay. Kangle, go. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to tell everyone is we've been picked up. Um, <laughs> you know, we've been reviewing Christmas movies or actually we reviewed one. Like once. We, we did it one time. And we did it very disorganized. Right. But, but we hey. are. Yeah. Today. We're going big. Yeah. Towards the end of the podcast. Uh, but we've been picked up for mm. our own Christmas special. Yeah. It's going to air on the Spike Network. None of this is true. No, it's true. You sound so convincing. No, it's, it's true. <laughs> Spike Network, it, it airs after Christmas. It's after Christmas. Yes, okay. It airs on. It's our own version of a Hallmark movie right. event. They're airing it on February 2nd. We don't know why. We figured, <laughs> you know, air it December 24th, but they're going to air it on February 2nd. Uh, that would be uh, 11 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time <laughs> like at a, 10 p.m. Central. Like on a Tuesday. It's on, I think like if you go – like we have Comcast. So if you have, I know on Comcast it's like channel 237. Well, what story are they airing, Scott? Well, it's going to be our Christmas engagement story. It is. It, Christmas which is, very, is very special to us because that's when you proposed to me. That's, that's great. Correct. Yes. So how long are we dating? Oh, my God. Four years, I want to say. Something like that. Oh, I don't even remember. I can't, it's I can't. terrible. It's, it's so long ago. Okay, if we started dating in 2000, so I think you, and we got married in 2005, you must have proposed in 2004? 
or three at the end of 2003. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, I think. Okay. Yeah. I think it was 2003, but that Christmas. So Let's then it was just 2004. We'll just go with that. Anyways, it could be wrong, though. It was um, early millennia. I feel like I wore a lot of express clothes back then. And you still were with the gap stripes. Gap stripes. Yeah. But I knew you were up to something because, okay, so you lived in Long Island because right. you had a job there and I was going to school in Buffalo and I lived at home and you lived at home. And we've been dating forever. And like, I knew you were like up to something. I'm like, he is up to something. And I couldn't figure out what. And I think like when you're that age, you're like, man, I hope he proposes because it's been like four years, you know, but yeah, I didn't want to ask or push back then, right. <laughs> you know? So I, I remember I was like on to you. I'm like, what are you doing? What are we doing for Christmas? Like, what are you doing? And you weren't going to be in town for Christmas. Right. I had, a, I said I had to go home for uh, work. Which I, made sense. I worked on Long Island. Well, and so. you worked in a Jewish school. Right. And you actually had to, they didn't have off for Christmas. No, so I actually it, took the days off. Yeah. Well, I know, but you didn't. Tell you. Tell me that. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Get ahead of me. Yeah. So yeah. like, I was like, I'm like, he's up to something. Something's weird or whatever. And I remember having this dream and, and I told you about it. Cause in my dream, all my cousins were, cause I, we would all have these big Christmas Eve parties and all my cousins would always come. Right. So all my cousins were wearing masks and then you were there and you presented me with a gift. And I told you this dream. I'm like, it was so weird. Like everyone's wearing masks and you give me a gift and then your face kind of like fell. And then you made up, well, I didn't know you made it up. You're like, oh, you're on to me. I got us a trip to Las Vegas. Yes. Yes, I did. And I'm like, oh. And then I was like, that's what you got me? I'm like, thanks. You know, and and even though, and it wasn't Christmas yet, but I was like, okay, thanks. And in my heart, I was like, I thought he was going to propose. Right. Because I, I, you know, I basically, I told you I was going back to Long Island. Yeah. And, you know, we had a goodbye, whatever, a little like tearful goodbye. And I presented you with that gift. Yeah. And that was to throw you off. Well, you the, wrapped the, the, up yeah. a brochure to Las Vegas, Vegas right. and I unwrapped it and there was like this brochure to Las Vegas. I'm like, right. okay, thanks. Right. And then we said goodbye, you know, yeah. we hugged and, yeah. you know, tears were ro- rolling down my eyes. I don't, I don't know about <laughs> yours, but mine, I, you know, puddles. Aw. And, um, and I left. Yes. Okay. But I didn't go back to Long Island. Right. I went to the Hampton Inn in West Seneca, which oh is very gosh. close to where you lived. Yeah. Right. Where my parents had, I don't know if they flew up or they dro- drove up, were also staying. So They drove. They drove, yeah. yeah. Okay, so me and you my parents. You all drove together now. Right. Actually. We're in the Hampton Inn. Yeah. You're in your house in South Lake in Buffalo. Yeah. You think I'm in Long Island. Right. I call you up a few times, you know, just as, oh. Yeah, and you forwarded your cell phone call. You forwarded the house calls to your phone. Right. So when I called your, because that, you know, when I would call your house, your parents' house phone to talk to you. Right. Like, um... No, wait, what was it? Hold on. Wait, you guys did something. Oh, man, what was it? Like, it was something like when I called, you. it, it sounded like you were still in Long Island or something yeah. when I called. I forget, you guys did something with call forwarding. Right. Now, remember, people, we, we are telling this story in real time. We haven't rehashed this story in many, many no, years. No, many that's why, years. That's yeah. why it's kind of, we were like looking for what to, to find, you know? So, um, all right, so then we're, we're, we're up there. You have no idea. You know, we were a little bored because we had we about, I think it was about 24, 36 hours till Christmas Eve at that point. So what were we going to do? We decided to go out to dinner. We went to the roadhouse, the steakhouse. We're in the booth. We're, you know, we're chatting up. All right, what's the plan? How am I going to do this? Uh, I got some certain props. I got my Santa suit. I got my Santa hat that I was going to wear. Uh, I had another little trick thing I'm going to tell in a, in a little bit. Uh, and we're just sitting there. And all of a sudden, we're, we have a window seat. Three people start walking towards the door. That would be your mom, your dad, <laughs> and you. That's right. We're like, oh, of all the restaurants, of all the time, you guys are about to walk in and see us, and that's going to blow the whole surprise. That's funny. Because you think I'm in Long Island. Yeah. So we're panicking. I go into panic mode. I'm hiding under the table. <laughs> the waitress asks, what am I doing under there? And I ordered. I actually ordered it from under there because I was hungry. So I ordered, I ordered my steak and sweet potato fries from underneath the table. And in that restaurant, you can throw all your peanuts on the floor. Yes. So that must have been really dirty. Yeah, there was a lot. Of, I had a couple of the peanuts. No. I was hungry. But I, we didn't know what to do. So you guys then eventually walked right by us. You did not see us. And you got a table. I don't know where, where you were sitting. And I said, you know, me and my parents were discussing – should we do it right now? Do I have to do it right now? Because they're going to find us out. Oh, yeah. You were going to do it right then. I think your mom talked you out of yeah, it. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let's just do it right now. 
you know, otherwise my, my surprise is blown. Right. Um, but my mom, I, yeah, my mom talked me out of it. Somehow we got out of the restaurant without you saying. <laughs> uh, um, I, had, I ate like everything really quickly, very nervous, but you didn't find out. Okay. Okay. We went back to the Hampton Inn. All right. Now we fast forward. It's Christmas Eve. And what are you, what's going through your mind at that point? So Christmas Eve, like a regular Christmas Eve, and, and my mom's acting weird because I think you told her the plan. I did tell your mom. Yeah. Yes. She was the only one to know. I did not tell your dad because I knew he is the mouth of the South but and then, he gives it away. Yeah. So my mom was acting weird and all of a sudden I hear, and, but everyone's there. It's Christmas Eve, you know, so food and family. Right, the whole family's kids, there. And everyone's running I mean, around. And um, all of a sudden on the speaker... Instead of Christmas music, our our song came on, which is a Garth Brooks song. Right. It came on, which is a Garth Brooks song. Isn't <laughs> that funny? And it came on, and I'm like, what is this? And then there was the door just like flung open. And it was windy. Santa <laughs> was there with a huge bag. Yep. And it was you, yep. and you were so nervous. And I, I'll never forget the first thing I noticed was you had um, cotton balls taped to your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> And you had this huge Santa bag and we had little kids there. So out of the sand and I'm just like on the stairs and I have pictures of this, which I can put up and I have, um, I'm, I'm on the stairs and I'm like, Oh my God, Scott, what are you doing here? And you had, you were like, ho, ho, ho. And you gave there, cause there were little kids. You, yep. you gave them presents right. and then you gave me a gift and I opened yeah. it up and it was, uh, yeah, an was so, so this okay. is, yeah. So this is like, you know, I had to put my little Scotty flavor on it. Uh-huh. And did you think I was Santa when I came in? I did. You did, right? Yeah. You didn't think it was me, right? No. Was, okay, good. It's like a Hallmark just, movie. Obviously, yeah, I obviously thought it was, was Santa. the yeah. real Santa. It was the real Santa. My parents had also sneaking in the back door. Yeah, so they, they were they in were the back. There. Yeah, yeah but there. I haven't seen them yet. They no, came at the end. Yet. They like, right. yeah. Yeah. So they wanted to watch it. But um, <laughs> so, you know, in Scotty fashion, I had to make it a little bit quirky. So I actually found this ornament, a little tiny kitten ornament, which we still have, and it goes on the top of the tree every, every year. Every year. We'll take, we can take a picture of it. Uh, and I put it in a little, like, ring box. Yeah. So I, pres- I know. so like, you know, after that I gave out the gifts and I take out this ring box, you open it up and, and you like, think it's going to be the ring. I'm like, oh, thanks. And it's a little kitty. <laughs> like, what the- at that point I'm like, and, okay. And then yeah, you got and, on one knee. Right. And then I gave you a hug and say, oh yeah, we're all done. And then no, I'm like, and then I, I got on one knee yeah. and it was the wedding uh, ring. It's so hard for you ring. to be serious, Scotty. Um, yeah. And my you- grandma's proven has passed her diamond. It was her diamond in there. In, in the ring. Which oh, it's it nice. still is. Yes. And, yeah. So... I, that's why we got picked up. You that's know, why the Spike Network. There's a us backstory up. to that because then I see your parents like kind of like float in um, behind the crowd of all my cousins and stuff like this who watched all this and it was like really nice and thank God you know it was before like a lot of cell phone cameras. Thank God somebody had a camera. They took pictures of this whole thing. Yeah, and so I have them. But it's funny because we don't at the time we had this dog named Ben and he just wasn't nice. Like we, he was nice to us, <laughs> right. like the, like the four of us, like yeah. my sister and me and my parents. He wasn't nice to other people. So to get in the back door, yeah, I don't know how they did it. They had to get by Ben, and I never yeah. asked them how they did it because oh, he was not a nice dog. Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't. I have no <laughs> he idea. He was like this rescue uh, shepherd mix, and he just wasn't. He was just nuts. But yeah. um. I don't know. Like, I, I love to, I need to hear. But yeah, that's our story of my Christmas Eve engagement to you. And then I go to you, wait a second. So we're not going to Las Vegas. You're like, yeah, no, that's. that's yeah. <laughs> you're right at the end. Like, I, I, like, I, I'm like, okay, fine. Oh. You know, Las Vegas is fun. Like, I'd worked my way into liking it or mm-hmm. whatever. But, and we, you're like, but we went on our honeymoon we to did. Las Vegas. Yeah, we did. So. All right. Let's hear from our first <laughs> sponsor. Okay. So, you know, if you're a creative person, you know the drill. Like you're finally done editing. It's perfect. But now you need to format and reformat for every single platform. But with Issue, I-S-S-U, you make it once and it's ready to post everywhere. I am not talented in the graphic designs department, yet I try to always make really nice designs And Issue has been such a help to me for that. And I've posted some of my more fancy stuff I've made on there in my stories, and I'll do it again. It is so easy. So Issue is the all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital publications from brochures to magazines to sales collateral and more. It's perfect for creators, marketers, designers, educators, publishers, salespeople, or anyone that just wants to make eye-catching content. And Issue makes it 
like so easy. Simply upload your PDFs and files and Issue transforms them using your vision and customizable templates to create the content you want. With Issue, you create it once and distribute it everywhere. Everything's optimized to promote and post on your website and social platforms like Instagram and Facebook. They can even help you make animated Instagram stories. Their app is super easy. I love it. And it takes me two seconds to make things that look like seriously, I hired somebody and paid hundreds of dollars to do. And you can start using Issue for free. They also offer premium features that give a more customized experience. So if you want to make fancy Instagram stories and make your publications and PDFs like really pop and look good and be consistent across all your platforms. I like can see this really good for like teachers, um, for like real estate, anybody that has a business, anybody that just kind of wants to make their stuff pop. It's really professional looking. So Get started with Issue today for free, or if you sign up for a premium account, you will get 50% off when you go to issue.com slash podcast. That's I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use promo code K-Y-A. That's I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use promo code K-Y-A at checkout for your free account or 50% off your premium account. That's issue.com slash podcast with promo code K-Y-A and be fancy. All right. So it is finally time to do our scavenger hunt. All right. So there are going to be five questions. All of these questions can be found on Google searching. Uh, we, I did give Mystic Michaela the scavenger hunt test. She failed. Um, <laughs> she was able to find three of the five, but we know that you can do better. So once you have these answers, we're going to give out all the instructions on the Mystic Michaela spiritual family page on Facebook, uh, when to post how to post it, but what we want you to do right now is to search. There's no rush. You don't have to, to you know, freak out, and you know, it's not like one of our events that sells out in like 30 seconds. You have time. Just write down your five answers and put them in order so you have them. All right, so our first question. Are you going to play, Mr. McKellen? No. Okay. Just I kidding. already played yeah. before. Yeah. They're all, if you know how to use Google, you can do this, and then, yeah, you have to belong to the closed Facebook group to post it, and we'll tell you one. All right. Are you ready? I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous yeah, too. I am too. This is like a big deal. It is. It's like huge. this took a lot of like to get together. It was. So I'm very excited. And, and this was your idea, by the way. Yay. Um, our official first date. So we're going down a trip memory lane again. <laughs> yes. Our first, our official. <laughs> our, our first. Our official. <laughs> our official first date was at Friday's. Friday's restaurant. TGI Friday's. I go all out on my first date. Well, so we I, were young. Yeah, I know. I, we still go to Friday's. Let's be honest. Do you remember what you ordered? Yeah. Chicken fingers. Me too. <laughs> Honey mustard. No. Blue cheese. Yeah. Okay. All right. So our first date was at Friday's in Amherst, New York. We want you to tell us where, or sorry, which mall the Friday's is located in. So So the name of the mall. The name of the mall. Okay. So again, Friday's in Amherst, New York. What is the name of the mall that it is located in? Okay. Question number two. I used to work at Holland Central Schools. As you know, I was a uh, history teacher. I worked at the high school in Holland, New York. We want you to tell us, what is the school district's mascot? Okay, so Holland Central Schools in Holland, New York. What is the school's mascot? Did you you remember it or you had to look it up? I had to look that up. You had to look it up, okay. Um, Number three. Um, we were just talking about Vegas. Was this the Vegas trip or this was a different trip, I think? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, uh, different trip. Different trip. Okay, one of our first trips, we took a tour of, you know, we, we were all over. We the traveled, National Parks. Yeah, National Parks tour. We traveled about 3,000 miles on, oh God, on the journey. In like 14 days. Yeah, we were in uh, South Dakota, mm-hmm. Colorado, all, the, all these different states. Yeah. But one place we went was Death Valley. That was, that was hot. It was so hot. It was because it was July. Yeah. July in Death Valley. I think it was like 118 degrees. It was ridiculous. I, all my pictures, I look grumpy. Yeah. But my hair looks good. Your hair looked really good. My hair looked really good. All right. (laughs) We want to know how many feet below sea level is Death Valley? So just the the amount of the feet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, If you have a green person around, they might have that random nature fact without the Google. I already knew it. I didn't even have to Google it. (laughs) And I'm not green. (laughs) Did you really already know it? Yeah. Well, we were there. Uh, I have a sign of a picture. Yeah, but I don't. I would never remember yeah. the exact number. Yeah. 
I don't remember the year we went, but I do remember that. I think that was, that was after we were engaged. That so was like 2004. Okay. Number four, question number four. We went through this crazy Eddie Money concert phase, or I went through it. No, I went through it with you. Were you with it? Okay, it was a good were, time. I didn't, wanna, good. I didn't wanna throw you under the bus. I there. love Eddie Money. All right. He Eddie, was Eddie, great. Yeah. Rest in peace, Eddie Money. Oh, he so passed. sad. I mean, he, he, that was hard. We loved him. He always did the free concerts local. Yep. Oh, we so had, good. We went, we went all over to see him, like Syracuse, Buffalo. Yeah, we even paid to see him. Detroit. We went all over yeah, to see him. We, we love Eddie Money. Anywhere within like 150 miles, we were there. It was a good show. It was. All right. So we went to all these Eddie Money concerts. We actually met him once. Very nice guy. I don't know. He probably had a purple aura. Purple green. Uh, purple green. What we want to know, one of our favorite songs is Eddie Money's hit, I Want to Go Back. We want to know the year that it came out in. I want to go back. I want to go back. Right. What year did it come out in? That was, that's the answer number four. All right. And our last question. One of Megan's favorite places to go in the Buffalo area is the Pegasus Diner Restaurant um, in Hamburg, New York. Pegasus, she, she Hamburg. To, Hamburg, Pegasus Diner. She used to go there with her friends all the time. Yeah, they're 24 all, hours. 24 hours. All they used to order was like a cup of tea and a piece of toast. We were poor, you know. Yeah, it, the we bill were like was, 19. Yeah, like I, I would, you know, she'd go with all her friends. I, you know, at that time I'd be like, hey, I'm going to pick up the bill. It was like $7.84. We were cents. like, big spender. Yeah, you know, $7.84. <laughs> Nobody would get a meal. $4 tip. <laughs> You got it covered. You had like names for all the wait, the oh waiters, God. didn't you? You got to understand. Oh, that's there's like a whole not, other episode. There's not a lot to do in Hamburg, New York. Yeah. What was there? Stash? Was that your favorite oh, one? Yeah. And then there was, oh my God, there was the bus boy. The bu- and yeah. We knew everybody. You knew everybody. Yeah. All right. So what we want to know to answer the last and final question is, what street is Pegasus Diner, or, re- or could we be like Pegasus Restaurant, in Hamburg, New York on? What street is the restaurant on? Pegasus Diner, Hamburg, New York. Hamburg, New York. We want right. the street name. So those are your four, so get your oh, sorry, five questions. And go over to the Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family on Facebook, and there will be a pinned post at the top for what to do next. Exactly. All right. What are we talking about today? Okay. So I wanted to talk about the Aura Gift-Giving Guide, you know, a little holiday-themed. But before I do that, let's do a, let's just talk about a little spiritual spin here on gift giving. A lot of us love giving, but we have some real issues with receiving. It can be very uncomfortable in general for empaths to receive anything. And it's so important to notice this in oneself and work on it. I have talked about this in other ways on the podcast, how the universe wants to give to you and you have to say yes, even though it can feel awkward because maybe a lot of times your role wasn't always the person who gets things or isn't the person who gets things. And what you've come to love, you know, to receive is just the joy you feel from others when you give. And that is the true gift. The joy of giving by feeling the giver feel special inside, you know, the giver feels seen and loved when you give somebody a gift like that person that receives it has all these feelings and as an empath you're like oh my gosh I did that and that's that's the joy of giving however it's really okay to receive yourself and allow yourself also to be the recipient of such attention that's the thing like the people in your life want to give to you too they want to give you that same joy they want to feel you receive that joy so sometimes you may think that you're being nice by not wanting anything or or saying oh don't spend anything or don't get me anything but really it's okay to receive and it's a lot it's really okay for you to get that kind of attention and it does feel weird but but you have to lean into it because you have to do it for the people who love you i have this friend And he would always try to give, you know, anything to his mother, birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, whatever. She would always brush it off. Why did you get me that? What's that for? I don't use that. I don't need that. Don't spend your money. And, you know, he didn't, he was very hurt by it, but he didn't see it that way. Like he didn't think too much about it, but I could tell that it did hurt him. Um, But he didn't see somebody being selfless. He saw himself as being rejected. He was being rejected. And when someone gives you a gift, they're being vulnerable. Like when you give someone a gift, you're giving them a piece of your heart. You're like, you know, I thought about this and I hope you like it. And you just sit there and you really hope they like it. And it's kind of like very open in that moment. And so when somebody's like, no, I don't need this. Or why'd you get this for me? Oof, that hurts. You know, that's a rejection. That's a wall. So when some, and, and the thing is, I see empaths sometimes doing that to people. Why'd you get me this? Why'd you spend this money? Oh my gosh, I'll never, stop. Don't do that. No, you have to say, wow, 
thank you. This is so beautiful to me. It's so special that you thought of me. And just open yourself up. And that's the gift you're giving to the other person. Even though they gave you something material, you're giving them back the thing that you yourself love when you give to others. And it's just that feeling of being seen and loved and validated that they were able to do that. And you can honor them giving you a piece of themselves. And so just a thank you and, you know, that remembrance that the thought matters more than anything and that the gift you are still giving to them by receiving it graciously is very golden. So I just wanted to kind of go through that as gift giving is happening right now and you may be getting things and getting stressed out or you don't want people to spend money on you or this or that. It's like, you know what? It's okay. It's okay to let them do what they want to do. And all you have to say is thank you and how much you love it. So what do we want to give for this year's gifts? I find that different aura colors like different types of things. First off, some of us, it is true. Some of us are incredibly hard to buy for and some of us really are not. I feel like if you had a spiritual awakening, you should tell people because you're going to get a lot easier to shop for if people know this about you, like crystals, incense, candles, or just like I got recently from my friend Leanna, a moon lamp, perfect gifts, perfect gifts. But let's start with blue people first. So blue people, like their thing is they just love the feeling of connection. Photos of family that are nicely framed, for example. They like sentimental jewelry. It doesn't have to be expensive. And if anything, like don't make it expensive because that would just stress out the blue person that you spend a lot of money. So really it's the thought that counts with them, which can actually make getting blue people a gift uh, hard because you're really got to think like what they'd like. And sometimes it's easier just to get somebody something that's not so thoughtful, but blue people do appreciate the thought. But, you know, books are always good, candles or gift cards for anything that's pampering because blue people do not spend money on themselves. So like just a gift card for a manicure is nice. I also find that blue blues love to do this adult coloring book thing, like with the good markers or lettering or calligraphy or stuff like that. They love that. Heating pads make them very happy. Uh, nice socks, nice loungewear, blankets, like high quality stuff in terms of comfort. They don't like a ton of attention or flashiness with their gifts. Sound machines, that works too. And anything like with nice lighting. Um, Yellows, yellow people. My friend who is a yellow literally told me one day with like a straight face in all seriousness that her label maker changed her life. Like she was, so she just was like, she's like, my label maker changed my life. Like she, it was hysterical, but she didn't mean it to be funny. But anyways, so that would work. I am sure for other yellow people in your life, organizational items, which they themselves perhaps wouldn't spend the money on. But here's the thing with yellows. They do like to pick out their own stuff. Like they have an idea of how they want to organize or do things. So you may want to do like gift cards for closet stores or organizational stores. They like audiobooks. It's a yellow thing. So that like Audible subscription is super neat for the yellows. Really nice kitchen stuff. Appliances, high-end kitchen accessories, like the good garlic press or a lot of stuff I don't understand or have. They like chef stuff. Um, They really, okay, yellow people love sharp knives. Yellows do not mess around with like the dull, rusted stuff that's 10 years old that I have in my kitchen. They like those sharp knives that like can slice a can open, like as seen on TV versions. Um... But, you know, they also do love clothes and and cute accessories. But again, you might want to let them pick it out. They can be specific. I also see yellows loving subscription boxes. Like, you know, the subscription boxes because they love to try new things and kind of get ahead on like what the fads are and brands and things like that. Yellows love skincare too. So anything where they can get to splurge on that works for them. Purples. You can really go anywhere here. Purples really do love funny, unique clothing pieces. I find that purples are more on trend with things. So fads are like what's happening now in terms of like pieces of clothing work for them. Like sometimes I see these like influencers have their um, limited edition, like James Charles has his like sister's stuff or what. I, like they, they just kind of love that stuff. Like I just got this or I just got that. Or I find that purples, yellow people do this too, but I do find that purples love to shop on the Instagram ads. And I never do it because I'm like, where is this from? And how long is it going to take? And I got burned once, so I'm never doing it again. But I see like purples are always getting the funny t-shirts and the cool outfits and stuff from those. You know, they're more risk takers. Um, 
But yeah, so that kind of stuff. They love all things psychic. So you can go crazy at the crystal store for them. You get all sorts of neat things. They love surprises. They do like to be surprised. Other colors, not so much. But you can surprise purples with an outing or a vacation or even just like a night out somewhere. Experiences are fun for purples. They love technology, which deals with them feeling connected to others. So you can get them that like Spotify subscription or a ring light so they can zoom more attractively. (laughs) And of course, like any sort of fun hair dye or press on nails or anything which can give them those purple bomb changes to their appearance on a small scale. So all that kind of stuff purples are into. Greens. So my dad is a green and he is just super hard to shop for. It depends on what green you have here in life. But I will say across the board, green people love plants. However, they can be super super like picky about it. Um, I always find it funny in that movie, Meet the Parents, the, the first movie where Ben Stiller gets the dad a really rare plant because he thinks he's some like famous botanist or something. Okay, like my green dad would have loved that. They love like odd plants or different kind of um, things for the garden, that kind of stuff. They do like power tools, ladders, things to make their garage more green person-ish. They do love books, um, especially about subjects of great specificity, which only they care that much in detail about. Depending on their interests, you know, You can pick out one of those books. Like I would get my dad like car books and things. He just likes stuff like that. But some some greens are super into politics or some are super into, I don't know, like nature things. And you can kind of move along with that. They do love a good sound system. And they do love their house to be a smart house. So here's the thing. Like before there were smart homes where like Alexa did a bunch of stuff for you, there was the clapper. I don't know like what ages I'm dealing here with. And green people were super into that. And before that, there was even the clapper. There were and still are something called surge protectors. So those are strips where you can just plug a bunch of stuff into. And somehow the green in your family would plug basically everything into one of those. And when you turned on the kitchen light, six to 20 other things would turn on. Okay, so before there was like these Alexa smart homes, this is what green people were doing. Like you turn on the bathroom light and like music played or something. So if you have a non-updated green, they may like some sort of upgrade to that. But if they're a stubborn green, maybe they just need more surge protectors. Um, Also, green people tend to be foodies and kind of beer or wine snobs. So you can always go that route. Get them something real uh, special. Red people. Red people hate surprises. So gift giving can be super stressful to them and you, because they want to control what they get, which makes Christmas so much fun here as I have two red people in my home. Oh, hello, red person. Hello. (laughs) This is why I think we do our exchange. I still have to go through like a couple other colors. Oh, no, that's fine. But this is why we go through our our updated exchange because like I would get you a shirt or something and you'd complain. No, you're spot on with that because (laughs) I don't like surprises. No, you don't. Like I really do want to know what I'm getting. Yes. Which is really strange because I now see that in Brie. Yes, and you were so mad at her. And we were at Oh, war, you're having a moment. And I'll just tell, I mean, Go ahead. I don't think she'll get mad at me, but no, she doesn't really listen to the podcast, although we're hoping, we're hoping to have her as a surprise guest today, but we don't know. <laughs> see what mood she's in. Um, well, she put down all these things on Amazon, like specific items. Yes, very okay, specific. Like very specific, like nail polish or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what she Nothing was too expensive though. No, no, no. Everything within range. Yeah. But very specific items. And they were all on Amazon. And, uh, you know, I like to go, personally, I like to go to the stores. So, like, yeah. you know, I like to go to Target or whatever. Yeah, you like to have control over it. Sure. <laughs> you know, she wanted, like, something, the James Charles. I think you mentioned James she Charles. She did, yeah, the palette. Was, yeah. It was on Amazon. But I wanted to go to Ulta where right. you get it. Yeah. I mean, which, which I did. But anyway. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, but she put all, she made this whole list, yeah. she made a whole pr- PowerPoint presentation yes. and these are the exact things that she wanted. Mm-hmm. They're all on Amazon. So, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, just watching a Christmas movie that we're going to review later. And I said, what do you guys want for Christmas? And Brie explained that she had this list and I said, okay, so these kind of things, right? These yeah. Cause she's red too. Items. She's red too. She didn't like surprises. And she's like, no, I want these exact mm-hmm. things. And I'm like, Okay. And then she showed me the Amazon and I'm like, well, can I just get them at Target? You know, I want to go to the stores. And she got very upset. Yeah. So I agreed. Actually, we went upstairs together, went on the computer, went onto my Amazon account and she put the things in the cart, right? Yes. And I pressed click. Yeah. You were grumbling the entire time. Yes. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> and um, but I said, you know, hey, look, you now know that on Christmas, and yeah. you know, we have some surprises for her too. But you now know that these items, these eight, ten, whatever items it was, they're coming. Yeah, and that's going to be there. You're not going to be upset about that. And she's like, no, I'm going to be very happy. Yeah, but that's how you are. I know, because last year we surprised her with a lot of things, and some like things that. were misses, and. Uh, she just got yeah. upset and like it's and I think like with red people they can be seen as selfish or yeah. rude or controlling or this or that but like they tell you up front you know when a red and and I think that's what we're trying to do for her as a kid and and like when you two and I think like you guys at home maybe you have two people that are the exact same person and you have to kind of watch them fight it out over things that they themselves are and then they see in the other person and it triggers them but because that's what I watched I saw two red people who both wanted control and yeah. the thing is is like I'm trying to teach her like, and I think you came to it, like, you know what, ask for what you want and the, you know, and we'll, that's it. And she doesn't want surprises. She understands there's no surprises and that's just how she is in life. And that's, right. that's okay. Now the red in me yeah. actually got her some surprises. <laughs> you did. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. <laughs> well, you'll see. She got the list. Yeah. She's getting some other stuff. A couple little things. And that could set her off and she could get upset because she's a red, right? Yeah. They yeah. just don't like to be tea. Well, so that's how you are. Definitely. So, so yeah, like sometimes for a red person, you just have to ask them what they want and get the exact, the exact thing. And it's annoying that you can't surprise them, but they like it better that you did what they told you to do. It's really kind of like manipulation a little bit, red people. But if you're purple like me um, and you're like, screw it, I'm going to surprise you, which I don't do to my daughter, but I do do to Scott, uh, you can do a few things here. Um, so here are some red people stuff like athletic wear. Okay. You can't go wrong here with athletic wear. They all tend to like that. You got to buy on brand though. Okay. You can't go off brand. You got to spend the money. Red people will notice and you have to get them like just the basics, basic things. They don't like stuff so much on trend. Um, Also, they love food because who doesn't love food? So this is safe. So a gift card to like Uber Eats is always good for these COVID times and non-COVID times like restaurants. They do like sports gear. So if you feel safe enough with their team choices, you know, go for it. They are very sensory though about a clothing item fitting them correctly. So always include those gift receipts and make sure you're getting their size exactly. Like basically go into their closet, see what they're currently wearing now, and basically buy a new one of that and you'll do good. Red people love nice shoes. Men and women, they love nice shoes. So a gift card to get themselves some really fancy shoes will be appreciated by the red people. With reds, you kind of have to give them things they already have. So they don't have to understand and reconfigure how they can fit it into their lives. So that's always fun for buying for red people. But I also get to buy for a turquoise person. So here's some turquoise people things. My five-year-old's turquoise. Um, Turquoises are so easy. They love crystals. They just love them. And you can get creative too. You can get like a crystal-infused water bottle. Or they have like crystal-infused candles I just found. Um, Or you can get like them essential oils and sprays for their room. Diffusers work. Like little diffusers. That's fun. Water features for ambiance. Salt lamps. Salt lamp night lights are so pretty. I just discovered those. A Reiki session with someone. Yoga wear. Energy-infused clothing. They have that like energy-infused t-shirts and things like that. Um... Yeah, turquoises. Pink people. Ask yourself what you would buy for a little kid obsessed with Disney and like just go from there. That's how you shop for a pink person. Uh, You know, they do love makeup and nail polish, sparkles. They love clothing with a fantasy spin on it. So sometimes I'll see pinks do like older pink kids. They'll do like, or even adults. So honestly, like cosplays. So like the wigs and the outfits and the whatnot. Um, They love aesthetic, like twinkle lights, anything for their walls, things like that. Cozy yet fancy clothing, just little fanciful things that would make them smile. They they truly are uh, good at little joy, joyful moments. Indigos, silk pillowcase. I just got one for myself and it makes me very happy. Like I'm just so happy with my silk pillowcase. Bedding of any kind, the good sheets and all that. Um, Bath salts, bombs, bath bombs, bath bubbles, and Netflix, little things for snacks. Someone on the page suggested for Indigos a charcuterie set and I love it. I'm so into it. Salt lamp, you know, blankets, nice wine glasses or nice coffee mugs, anything downy, downy down uh, pillows or comforters. It's all good. A high quality robe. Spend it. Face masks, spa day stuff for home, massage gift card. Better yet, if the masseuse comes to your house. Animals, things for their pets. Um, We just discovered one of our clients makes crystal infused leashes and collars. It's so cool. Anything 
uh, animal related, they're super happy. You know, I hope this helps. I hope you found this fun. And maybe this year you could make sure you get yourself a few things too. Like I did with the pillowcase. It made me feel like I really loved myself. And it was such a nice little warm feeling when you could do some self-love and self-care for you too. I want to see what you gave your loved ones and their aura colors on the MMSF uh, Facebook page. I hope you share with us some of your fun aura related finds. Definitely. And just like if you found your favorite Christmas movie on TBS, we have another sponsor here (laughs) that you can listen to. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I was just talking about, uh, you know, shopping. And of course, at this time, we're doing a lot of online shopping. And I want to talk about one of our sponsors called Honey. So like I said, my eldest, you know, gave us very specific things to get and whatnot. And I like to shop around just to make sure I'm getting the right deals. And it's, Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically applies the best one available at checkout. So no longer do you have to say, you know, coupon for this place or coupon for this place or free shipping code for this place. It just will pop up on your browser and you just click it and it applies it. So here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free. It is free, 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 free in two easy clicks by going to joinhoney.com slash K-Y-A. Then when you're checking out on one of its over 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons for that site. If Honey finds working codes, it'll apply the best one to your cart. No thinking required. I had to get my eldest sneakers. She wanted, of course, you know, a certain pair of sneakers. And I couldn't get them on Amazon. I had to go to like different sites and stuff like that. And when I found one that I wanted, the coupon code popped up for free shipping. And I would have had to search for that. And there it was just right on there. And I saved, I don't know, 10 bucks on that. How much would shipping have been, you know? And like, it was so easy and it's not annoying. That's the other thing. Cause like, I think when we think like pop-ups or whatever, it's just this tiny little cute thing that shows up in the corner like, hey, here's a coupon, you know, and like you can get rid of it if you want to, but it's not obnoxious. So anyways, Honey has found over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. Honey supports all kinds of retailers from tech and gaming sites to fashion brands to even food delivery. It always pops up for me whenever I'm shopping online. It's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and works with whatever browser you use. You can get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash K-Y-A. That's joinhoney.com slash K-Y-A. And thank you for always using our sites and our sponsor links. Okay. I can't tell you guys enough about how much I love Function of Beauty. Like seriously, us and the kids... And Scott even mm-hmm. notices it. I mean, you I, smell I a, me all the time. No, I have a very yes, I have a very bad sense of smell, <laughs> um, which some people might find surprising. Uh, but <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know. Someone might get that somewhere. Okay. Uh, but you, it smells fantastic. Yeah. Like I kind of like it's really weird. I, I, I kind of sometimes just take your head and like sniff you it. You do. I'm like uh, the and I'm like oh yeah, affection. Like the new president <laughs> is gonna be. He likes to sniff. <laughs> Well, that's a weird fetish, but anyways, it's, it's very strange, but function of beauty will bring it out, bring it out in you, bring out the fetish. <laughs> All it's right. for everybody. So yeah. So like I said, um, function of beauty, I can't say enough about it. The kids and I are absolutely obsessed with it. If you've watched those commercials with women letting down their soft, silky hair, but don't get the same results from the bottle, which has been my life, you need a better solution. Get the right product for you. No gimmicks, only your commercial ready hair. My hair does look really good lately uh, since I've been using it. And over time, it's gotten even better. Like it's like building, it's getting healthier. Uh, Function of Beauty is hair care that is formulated specifically for you. No matter your hair type, they create shampoo, conditioner, and treatments to fit your unique needs. How unique, you ask? Function of Beauty has over 54 trillion possible ingredient combinations to make sure your formula is as unique as you. Here's how it works. First, you take a quick but thorough quiz and tell them a little bit about your hair. Next, Function of Beauty's team determine the right blend of ingredients. Then they bottle your custom formula to order. Then they deliver your personalized formula right to your door. Or in a cute customized bottle with your favorite color and fragrance. They even print your name on it. So cute and kids love it. Plus their formulas are vegan and cruelty free. They never use sulfates, parabens, or any harmful ingredients. Function of Beauty is not 
Just, the first ever custom hair care blend. It is the internet's top rated customized hair care brand with over 40,000 real five-star reviews and counting. So what are you waiting for? Go to functionofbeauty.com slash KYA to take your four-part hair profile quiz and save 20% on your first order. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash KYA for 20% off and to let them know you heard it from our show. Thank you so much. That's functionofbeauty.com slash KYA. Makes a great gift, I swear. It it really does. And, you know, I had to uh, bribe Brie. We're going to bring Brie on for our our aura-splaining holiday movies. It's happening. And... In order to get her on, I had to actually give her a bottle of Function of Beauty. <laughs> well, I share. I did one. I did lavender for me, lavender yeah. scent, and I did my own quiz. And then she got to do her quiz, and we got her peach. Yeah, I got the mango. Do they have mango? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> they might. Right, I, don't I know. got the pineapple. Those are the ones I know. Okay, and then you can pick the colors too. Right. <laughs> well, I, I've been using one of the bottles. Okay. Hey guys, so we're back now with KYA's. Favorite guest of all time. All time. <laughs> she was on episode 42. She also happens to be our daughter, Brianna. <laughs> Bree, give a hi. Hi. So Bree's 11. Bree's 11. Yep. She sees colors. Uh, what are your aura colors, Bree? Red and purple. So she's red and purple. I'm red and blue. And Mystic Michaela over here, of course, is indigo and purple. Indigo and purple. So we brought her on because what we do at night after we put the other one to bed, our five-year-old. <laughs> the turquoise. Is we sneak downstairs, <laughs> we make the popcorn, we start to party. No, we make the charcuterie. Yes, we make the charcuterie. <laughs> That's right. What is charcuterie in, a, in, a, in this house? Um, cheese, grapes, apples and crackers, and yeah. sometimes pears. And sometimes pears, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we make that, and then because Mystic Michaela is an indigo, we can't watch anything scary. No. Nothing to do with aliens. <laughs> nothing to do with anyone with dogs. Dogs. No oh, dogs. Yeah. All we really are left with Hallmark. is Hallmark or Netflix holiday movies. <laughs> That's it. We're late to the game on the Hallmark too. Like, I know other people have been watching them for a long time, but we like just discovered it and it's amazing. Right. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is we're going to do two things. We're going to or explain some of your favorite holiday movies. Uh, the Mr. McCallum Spiritual Family uh, pick some movies out uh, on a thread, and we're going to do those. And then we're going to also give our rating, which we did in, uh, I think, about two episodes ago. We're going to rate one holiday movie from Hallmark. Uh, mm-hmm. And we rate it on a crystal system that you all know about, the Amethyst Crystals. So we'll see what that movie gets. <laughs> all right. So the first movie that we're going to or explain. Bree, I know you've seen this movie. The movie is? Elf. Elf. Okay. A.K. my favorite Christmas movie. Is that your favorite Christmas movie? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, um, or explain it. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Buddy, what would you say, Buddy, the main elf, what would his color be? Mm, I'd say like pinkish. Okay. Maybe turquoise, but mainly oh, pink. Oh, pink or turquoise. What do you think, Mr. McCann? I agree. I think that that's, and again, like these are characters, you know what I mean? So they're kind of like over-exaggerations, but it's fun to or explain them for fun. <laughs> but yeah, like, because he's such a little kid, like, and, and he so vehemently believes everything okay. and makes everybody believe with him. Right. Which is what pink people do. Yeah. All right. The dad. Okay. So the dad, you <laughs> oh. know, he finds out his son is an elf, Buddy the Elf. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, we might have differences of opinion on some of these, by the way. I'm going to go with he's red and blue, but he has way, way too much red going on. And Brie, what do you think? What do you think, Brie? Oh, I say he's green and red. Green and red. Yeah. Because the whole movie, he's like telling everyone what to do and stuff. Like his way. Okay. Like, it's like systematic, big... you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like a workaholic or whatever. Okay. Like that, which is like a green person thing. Mm-hmm. Too. Okay. All right. So, that. but we all agree too much red. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Too much yeah. red. Okay. Like the anger. Uh, the mom who, you know, lets Buddy do all the holiday decorations and drink <laughs> all love, the soda, the I two liters. Her. Buddy and your dad actually drink about the same amount of Pepsi in a day. <laughs> True. Um, your dad told me he drinks three liters of Pepsi a day. That's so disturbing. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what color would we say that he is? Oh, she, sorry, the she mom. is. I apologize. Yeah. Purple and blue, maybe? Pur- okay. Yeah, like purple, blue, purple, maybe it, indigo. Maybe an indigo. She's definitely like an empath, okay. for sure. Yeah. All right. And then Buddy's little friend, I don't know, they're not like girlfriend and boyfriend. Are they girlfriend and boyfriend? Yeah, in the movie? at the end, they like go to Elfland together. They do. Okay. So Jovi. <laughs> they have a baby. Oh, oh. Like, is that our elves that we have in the house now? No. 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 Okay. 
Um, I don't know if they got created that way. I have no idea how they came to be. Daddy, no. Please. All right. Stop. You know, you're very disturbed. You did this last week, too. All right. Santa, St. Nick, whatever. Um, Papa Noel. All right. Jovi is, I would say, purple? Yeah, purple, maybe red, a little red. A little red. Yeah, because she is feisty. Feisty, okay. Yeah, but then she's got, like, that purple shaming thing going on because she won't sing. (laughs) And then Buddy makes her. Okay. And so her purple comes out. So basically her whole life she was shamed for being purple. Yeah. And then it finally comes out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. right. Let's move on to our next movie. Okay. Now, I don't, Bree, I don't know if you've seen this movie, but this is Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase, Mm -hmm. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I think I've seen it, but I don't remember it. All right. Let's see what we got here. Clark Griswold, main character. I'm going to go with he's definitely red and blue. But he tries to have the inauthentic green. Inauthentic green. Because a green person would have figured out that light system like a lot better. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. But he's trying to be more green than he is. Okay. You know? Uh, what about Uncle Eddie? Oh, that's a hot mess purple. Oh, t- total hot yeah. mess purple. Yeah. <laughs> he's like their best one. You love yeah. Uncle Eddie. I love Uncle Eddie. Um, we actually have a friend that was dating a character that looked like Uncle Eddie. That's right. Um, <laughs> we won't mention her name. Um just to, you know, save her embarrassment. Um, Clark Griswold's wife, victim blue. Right? Well, no, she's not really a victim. Vic- she's just like blue. Blue. and then, But then she's got to get mad at him all the time. So she but, might have like an authentic red. You, like she, she doesn't get really mad. She's just like, oh, stop it. Like, yeah. you know, but that's how I feel like with you a lot. Because you'll get on like these projects, like when you're being all red. Uh-huh. So she's like Clark a little bit. And it's just like, oh my God, just stop. Or like yeah. he, gets some, he gets something in his head and he can't let it go. Yeah. I mean, I feel a little bit. So like I think Clark she's sometimes. yeah, she's like a blue. I yeah. think she's like a blue. She's understanding, but she right. just kind of sighs like and just the, let it yeah. happen. I mean, that would be my recent, you know, red blue, and then I've decided to power wash the roof and figure out how to do that. Yeah, that would be the inauthentic green, right? Exactly. Yeah. But I did a good job, I think. Did you? <laughs> oh, thank you, Bree. You spent like ten hours on it. <laughs> you spent three days. Bree, three maybe days. we should change this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> know your aura with Brianna. <laughs> I just got, I didn't want you to fall off the roof. It made me nervous the entire time. All right. Because you almost fell off the roof last year. And so <laughs> I have like post-traumatic stress disorder every time you go out there. It was for the news. We were on the news for that. You're talking about the time we were on the news for the hurricane? Yeah. And you almost yeah. fell off the roof and it scared me. I needed to look good on Buffalo <laughs> News. All right. Um, a Christmas Carol, the classic. I only watch the Mickey version. Same. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but... Oh, it, I, or Scrooge. I'll watch Scrooge. Oh, Scrooge. But you yeah. like them. You but do Mickey, like the Mickey's. Yeah. It's all you need to know. No. You don't have to go read the classic. Yes. 21 don't minutes, you're in and out. <laughs> Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol, you get the gist. You get the gist. Bob Cratchit, <laughs> what would we say his colors would be? But, um, so he's probably like, you know, he's the victim blow. Victim blow. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't stand up for himself, you know. Um, yeah. But now, of course, one of the most fabled characters in literature, Scrooge. Mm. I would say probably a green or a red. I'm not sure. That's yeah, hard. Can, and then he's really hiding his blue because at the end he comes nice. And But don't you think he only becomes nice because he realizes there's a consequence from Ooh, the third ghost? That's very interesting. Which to me feels more like he logically realized he had to be nice. Do you think the ghosts have auras? Of Christmas past, present, and future. Yeah, like who's the big giant one? He was fun. The, yeah. The, the, oh, yeah. Which one's that one? The ghost of the Christmas present. Present. Like yeah. he seemed like um like a purple. Okay, he's a purple <laughs> ghost of. It depends on what version of the movie you watch. Also. Yeah. Like Jiminy Cricket. Oh, Jiminy Cricket in the, in the cartoon. Yeah, he's like a real balanced green guy. Yeah, I green. would say. Yeah. Like really okay. informative, you know. All right, and the nephew, his his nephew, nephew Fred. I think he would be kind of like that blue blue to go. Okay, blue you know, to go. He's trying to get Scrooge to come to the party. He's yeah. friendly, he's nice, and really feels Scrooge and wants him to gotcha. kind of change his ways and things like that. All right. All right. So those are our aura explaining three Christmas movies. Yes. Three popular Christmas movies. All right. So we, we watched the Christmas house on Hallmark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this one, so we me, are going to give we our give review. give the premise first. All right. So you give the premise Okay. So it was... <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot it. I mean, it was three years I ago. Well, all, well, first of all, all these movies... Well, then Netflix has them too. So it's kind of like The Christmas House, The Christmas Inheritance, The Christmas... Oh, that was good. Yeah, we yeah. liked that one too. So The Christmas House was the newer movie this week on the Hallmark Channel. Right. So they take all the furniture out and they replace it with just everything Christmas. Okay. And she has a whistle 
and she's like <laughs> yelling at everybody all day to get everything done and be on schedule and who's making the cookies and you have to like fluff the garland correctly and you have to like oh, yeah. lay, lay yeah. this down so obviously like what she was total yellow yeah i mean she yellow yellow she, she was, yellowed yeah. the crap out of christmas right yeah she was like over the top over the top yellow you know mm-hmm. And then her husband and her, so it was, like, a big thing because, you know, it's a Hallmark movie, so they don't get too deep. But, you know, there's something going on between them. Yeah. And, like, you're trying to figure it out. Now, the husband, who I think was played by an obscure Baldwin. Yeah, he looked like a Baldwin. Yeah, he looked like a Baldwin. I think it was, like, their long-lost uncle, yeah. Baldwin. Mm-hmm. Um, he was probably, what colors was he, do you think? Mm-hmm. What color do you think the dad was? Definitely blue because he said he did yoga. Okay. And yeah. purple. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> he was, like, more the feeler. The feeler. Yeah, really Maybe nice. Maybe a purple blue. Yeah. Okay. Nice guy. Yeah, he like took all her crap and was trying to make it better. Okay. He and got then, all romantic at the end. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then you had the the son. I forgot his name. He, you, you would probably remember, remember his no. name. The doc, no, the lawyer guy. The uh, lawyer was the son. I don't know what his name was. Well, yeah. he was an actor lawyer. He was, yeah, was, an, he actor was lawyer. an actor. You know, the thing is with him, he was so vanilla. Like he didn't even have like any sort of aura characteristics. Right. He was boring. He was really boring. He had no aura. And he had like one expression the yeah. whole movie. So it's like he had no even fake aura for, and what would you say, Brie? Nothing. I don't. He really. was like very vanilla. But he had great hair. He had great hair. Really good hair. Amazing hair. He had incredible hair. Like the best <laughs> hair I've ever seen. <laughs> I highly recommend that movie. Um, as in most movies, there's the the Santa shows up. Yes, the Santa. Oh, of course, Santa shows up. <laughs> the Santa plot twist. Yeah. The, uh, there's Saint always Nick. a Santa plot twist in every Hallmark movie. Well, or Angel, yeah. or Guardian Angel plot well, twist. I thought Noel Baba was that's another name for Santa in Turkish. Oh. Um, was either because he was like a magician guy. Yeah. I thought he was either a pedophile. Or Santa. <laughs> it was like one or the other. Yeah. So but I, I don't know what they were going for. <laughs> Maybe what you're going <laughs> But you're in a Hallmark movie, so it's always very wholesome. Right. So you're saying he's probably uh, Papa Noel. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Let's go around the table. The movie is called <laughs> The Christmas House. We are going to give it a, a score of crystals on a score of one to five. Five is the best. One is the worst. Let's start with Mystic Michaela. Mystic Michaela, how many crystals are you giving the Christmas house? I'm going to give it a four. It kept my attention. Um, I thought it could go a lot darker than it went because they kept alluding to mom and dad weren't going to be together anymore. So right. I was like, is one of them terminal? But it right. just turned out they were going to like get divorced, but then they decided not to. Okay. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Okay. So four, four <laughs> crystals from Mystic Michaela. Brianna, what, how many crystals are you giving this? Um, I give it a three because it was boring and the mom literally drove me insane she's like i hate her so much and then his girlfriend literally dumped him because he couldn't do a magic trick and they were obsessed with magic by the way oh yeah and yeah. she was Just so random. annoying and she was so mean to him for like the first hour it, i give it a three it was trash you, you, <laughs> three and tra- that's that's pretty good for we get trash. very yeah. invested in our hallmark movies Brianna yes we and I. do the uh, only good part was the Santa plot twist. The Santa plot twist what? gave it the extra crystal for me. Yeah, I saved it because okay. at the end I was like, "That's yeah, Santa! But- that, that was Santa!" Yes, and I'm <laughs> gonna, I am going to agree with the two of you and say the magician, who yeah. might have been Santa yeah. or a pedophile, really saved the movie. Yep. He also that me calling him a pedophile also saved this segment. Um, <laughs> this Christmas <laughs> review, uh, which was going nowhere. Um, so I'm going to give it two crystals. Uh, Two of Amethyst Crystals. Okay. All right. And, I mean, you might want to check that one out. Now, the other thing... All right, so we're done with that segment. Let's move on. Okay. Okay. Just that was move, your move. idea. Yeah, that was my that idea. That was always I, your idea. I never wanted to do the Christmas review. Right. I did. And that, <laughs> we are not... Well, well, I wanted to do all Hallmark, Hallmark and Netflix movies. Well, I wanted to do The Christmas Inheritance. That was okay. Go oh, watch yeah. The Christmas Inheritance on Netflix. Well, okay. It is worth it. Well, well we're not going to review it, Brie, but Christmas Inheritance was Brie's favorite. Yep. Look it up on Netflix. How many crystals would you give The Christmas Inheritance? Five and tell out us why. Of five. five. What? Because? Because it was beautiful. They kept calling it a big town when it was really a small town. Oh, wait. Reverse way. Sorry. And it was amazing. Amazing. And there was also a Santa plot twist. Also, and I'm pretty sure they stole it from Hallmark. And I give it a five out of five. It was beautiful. Okay, so people, we're not going to review it, but the Christmas inheritance, five out of five. It's everything you need. Yeah, I'm also going to give. I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give that four out of five. Four or five crystals. No, they didn't leave. There was not one loose end. They left they, at the end. They, they, they tied it all up 
at the town hall ball. It was on truly Christmas a Christmas. Eve. It was truly a Christmas miracle. <laughs> truly. Um, the last thing we have to talk about before Bree's got to run, she's got to go to sleep. No, I don't. <laughs> is I've been getting many DMs. I don't know who this person is, but people have been DMing me and saying James Charles, and I don't know who that is. Okay, I'm like, is that my like uh, cocker spaniel that I know from down the block? Um, <laughs> But you said you know who James so Charles is. So weird that people DM you asking you about James Charles. Yeah, that's what I thought was weird yeah, too. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. But Brie, can you tell us, tell the audience what his colors are? Okay, well, James Charles is a beauty influencer. He has his own YouTube channel with 24 million subscribers, I believe. No. Mm-hmm. 24 million? Yeah. Or 24? Oh. 24. 24. 24 gonna, million. Daddy's going to run around. Oh, okay. No. okay. <laughs> so 24 <laughs> million followers. Right. And I say his colors are red and purple red with and purple. maybe a little blue. Okay. But red mainly pur- red and purple. Now, is that because you're red and purple and you like James Charles? No, I say he's red because he takes on his YouTube channel. He's more of a leader. When, like, I watch paparazzi videos, he, like, is always there. He's always out there. So I think he's red. And then he's purple because he's, like, a fun person and all. So I say he's red and purple. Would you say he's... Uh, uh- Authentic. Is he living an authentic life? Uh, no, I don't. No, he's not authentic? Mm-mm. He's inauthentic. Mm-hmm. Do you know what the word authentic means? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's fake or real? Real. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So, so That's think, authentic. So, he, oh, okay. so yeah, so he's authentic and he's... <laughs> <laughs> Meaning he doesn't have any colors that should not be there. Like, do you think he's, like, really himself when he's on yeah. his... Like, that's... What, what you see is what you get. Mm-hmm. Like, if you met him in person, it'd be the same as watching one of his videos. Yeah. Okay. I agree. You agree? Anything to add? No, I, I think he's great. I, I mean, he's a little bit into himself, you know, but I th- but I feel like he's got a good heart. Um, Does, it, does he have a good heart, Brie? Because he feels like he's got, mm-hmm. like, a heart for charity or things like that. Or, I think he does. Do yeah. you, should we get him on the show? Man, I mean, I mean, I I have his number. I don't know if I have the time. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I can get him. I would just love him. Yeah. Like, this is my vision. Okay, tell me. All right, this is my this is my vision. <laughs> Gonna need a lot of help. I would love to be on his YouTube show, but then he does Bree's makeup because oh she loves God. him so much. And how cool would that be? How? Okay, would yes. you do that, Bree? I, I, I no, think. I'd be too scared. No, I'd like, make you. <laughs> <laughs> I think if the three of us put our heads together. We right. get nowhere, but um, let's <laughs> manifest it. Let's manifest it. Ooh. Now you're because I know that the people that probably follow this guy, yeah, well, I don't know who he is, but the people that the 24 million people, yeah, they're probably dying to know his aura colors, right? So that's our in. Okay. What do you think, Bray? We can get this. We can do this. I think so. Would you want to have him on the show? Sure. Would you want to interview him? <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, okay. But I'll be there. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, let's kind of you know this is going to be our last episode of. 2020. It is. Uh, we're taking two <gasps> two weeks off for the holidays. I know. Oh my god. So um, this is it. This was 2020 was a ride, man. And wow, I'm glad you were all here with us for it. Um, I'm so thankful to the Mystic Michaela spiritual family. I'm thankful to all of you individually, collectively. You're such a blessing to us all. We're so thankful that you're here for this podcast for a little bit of our lives. We hope we bring you some sort of semblance of awareness to yourself and that like you can you know connect to source and spirit today where you're at currently you don't have to do anything else you can be in quarantine and you can do stay-at-home orders and you can still live your most authentic life doing so and i hope some of that filters out to you guys yeah i mean it's just just been an incredible run for us and you know we're so thankful for all your support and all the people that have given reviews oh my gosh voted us Voted for us on the for the podcast awards. Yes. Get us nominated. Uh, all the all the the comments and all the messages we receive daily. You know, yeah. tons of just of, the community. Just incredible. It's been an incredible run. Like what what they what you guys all do for each other too. Like yeah. the support. I see you guys helping each other. I see people who are sick who are receiving support from one another who's gone through the same things. People in relationship issues reaching out to one another. It it's just it's such a beautiful accepting community. Yeah. You know, you know, it's weird. Like, I mean, and I, I think we got to end it now, but it's weird. Like, we're gonna be off the air for two weeks. Yeah. And I kind of feel like it's almost like a goodbye for a little bit. You know, yeah. for a little bit of time. It feels kind of a little sad to me. It is sad because yeah. we like to kind of visit. Yeah. We're, you know, people were there every week for them, and uh, yeah, in their homes, and they're and here for cars, us. showers, and us too. Because like, us too. Yeah. after an episode, I like to connect with everybody. Yeah. And and see what they thought. 
So happy holidays to you all and very happy new year. And we will see you in 2021. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on your podcast app.